Thank you. We will turn in our Bibles to Psalm 90. Psalm 90. I'll request Rakesh Bhaiya to read it for us. Psalm 93, the whole, Psalm 90, the whole of it. <coughs> yes, sir. हे प्रभु तो पीढ़ी से पीढ़ी तक हमारे लिए धाम बना है इससे पहले कि पहाड़ उत्पन्न हुए या तूने पृथ्वी और जगत की रचना करी कि मरण अनादि काल से अनंत काल तक तू ही परमेश्वर है तू मनुष्य को लौटाकर मिट्टी में ले जाता है और कहता है हे आदमियों लौट जाओ क्योंकि हजार वर्ष तेरी दृष्टि में ऐसे हैं जैसा कल का दिन जो बीत गया या जैसे रात का एक पहर तू मनुष्यों को धारा में बहा देता है वे स्वप्न से ठहरते हैं वे भोर को बढ़ने वाली घास के समान होते हैं वह भोर को फूलती और बढ़ती है और सांझ तक कटकर मुरझा जाती है क्योंकि हम तेरे क्रोध से भस्म हुए हैं और तेरी जलजलाहट से घबरा गए हैं तूने हमारे अधर्म के कामों को अपने सम्मुख और हमारे छिपे हुए पापों को अपने मुख की ज्योति में रखा है क्योंकि हमारे सब दिन तेरे क्रोध में बीत जाते हैं हम अपने वर्ष शब्द के समान बिताते हैं हमारी आयु के वर्ष सत्तर तो होते हैं और चाहे बल के कारण अस्सी वर्ष भी हो जाएं तो भी उनका घमंड केवल कष्ट तो भी उनका घमंड केवल कष्ट और शोक ही शोक है वह जल्दी कट जाती है और हम जाते रहते हैं तेरे क्रोध की शक्ति को और भय के योग्य तेरे रोष को कौन समझ सकता है हमको अपने दिन गिनने की समझ दे कि हम बुद्धिमान हो जाए यौवा लौटा कब तक और अपने दासों पर तरस खा भोर को हमें अपनी करुणा से तृप्त कर कि हम जीवन भर जय जयकार और आनंद करते रहें। जितने वर्ष तू हमें दुख देता आया और जितने वर्ष हम क्लेश भोगते आए हैं उतने ही वर्ष हमको आनंद दे तेरा काम तेरे दासों को और तेरा प्रताप उनकी संतान पर प्रकट हो हमारे परमेश्वर यहोवा की मनोहर का हम पर प्रकट हो तो हमारे तो हमारे हाथों का काम हमारे लिए दृढ़ कर हमारे हाथों के काम को दृढ़ कर All right, I'm sure all of us are preparing for the quiz scheduled next month. Okay, as I shared the title of the message of the Bible study, the fact of man and the fact of God. Before we get into that, you know, the psalm says the writer is Moses, the man of God. It says a prayer of Moses, the man of God. So the uh, food for thought this evening is a question that all of us can ask uh, uh, to ourselves is, if at all God had to write about me or write about you, what would be God writing about us or me? Okay. Will it be Linson, a man of the world? Will it be Linson, a man of his wife? Will it be a man of his children? Will it be a man of his company? What would that be? Or will we be actually called the man of God is something that we should be uh, thinking upon. All right. So uh, that's for a second. Since uh, Moses has written this, it's good to look at uh, uh, why he was called and uh, why, why, why did God call him to uh, be a leader of uh, his people? And uh, uh, when we look at history and when we look at what Moses could accomplish, we understand that, uh, you know, uh, throughout the history of mankind, there hasn't been a leader of uh, Moses kind. You know, we have many leaders in our country, even in the past, people who were able to mobilize a very, very large number of people. Even in modern days, we have leaders in our country and outside who are very, very strong and uh, who think they are invincible. But at the same time, when we compare it with Moses, they are nothing. He was leading a very, very large group of people and actually drawing them out of a country where they had been slaves and bring them into uh, uh, the promised land. And that too, uh, the numbers are running into lakhs and uh, probably we do not have the exact count, but it was uh, multiple lakhs, uh, at least for the uh, uh, understanding that we have, it ran into lakhs and that too big numbers, all right. So uh, we must look at why Moses was called. 
and uh, uh, you know all of us know the history the background is that when he was three months old you know his parents had no choice but to uh, give up this child and we know how he, this child uh, reached the palace and even after spending uh, 40 years in palace how did this boy get to know that uh, this is not where he actually belongs uh, and this is not my people i don't belong here was something uh, moses knew how did he get to know that so uh, a very very important role of his mother is what we see uh, uncle has shared many a times that uh, she's the only mother who was paid to bring up her own child and uh, 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 and uh, we as we understand it would be uh, none other than his mother himself who while bringing him right from his early days would repeatedly tell him son i am your uh, actual mother and uh, i had to do this for xyz for this reason and uh, uh, you know we are not of this palace uh, this is not our people our people are we are jews the uh, descendants of abraham isaac and jacob and uh, we are here slaves and we have a god who is jehovah and uh, he he will someday uh, take us out and uh, we we look forward to that day and she would have had explained uh, you know all the good things that the lord god had done in their life and slowly and gradually instilled in the confidence the faith uh, in moses about god at the same time the concern that uh, he should be having for his people uh, so uh, his mother played a very very crucial role in his calling so uh, to all the mothers who are uh, hearing uh, listening to me this evening you know you have a very very important role to play and uh, you know uh, who your child turns out to be who uh, your uh, child uh, you know tries to emulate uh, who your try uh, child uh, i mean copies all that uh, you know uh, is a, a result of uh, what the mother does because you know it's the mother who spends most of the time with the child and in the indian uh, indian context particularly it's the men who go out and work though that's slowly changing but still even now it's the men who go out uh, to work and uh, maybe in the evening a few hours a couple of hours a morning couple of hours that's it what men spend with their child so uh, the role of a mother becomes very very important in uh, shaping uh, the child in the uh, in the ways of god and uh, that's what uh, moses mother did that's why we see that even after in the palace for 40 years being trained as one of the uh, you know child of pharaoh or pharaoh's daughter's son you know and must have been given all the training of that uh, uh, of their culture and everything yet uh, we read about moses that he went out to see his brethren okay he knew that he was not of this palace his people are not egyptians but his people were jews and that's why we see that he went out to see how his brethren were doing so uh, one of the reasons of why moses was called was he had concern for his brethren okay he thought about his people and uh, uh, that's something we should also be thinking about how much are we concerned about our people you know the group the group or the congregation or the church or the larger group which god has provided how much are we concerned about it uh, second we understand that uh, the re the reason of him being called was uh, you know he did what he could you know he was stirred by injustice you know when he went out to see his brethren uh, he saw an egyptian smiting a jew and we see that uh, he though he did it the wrong way but yet he tried to do something then when the priest of uh, midian you know his daughters came to the well to get water uh, the shepherds drove them away and we saw that moses again stands up for these uh, uh, women and helps them get the water okay so moses was stirred with injustice so and moses wanted to do something uh, so that that again was uh, that you know he did what he could and what he could not he gave it to the hands of god and we, we we when we today look back we see what great things he could accomplish and uh, when god worked through him he could do uh, i mean humanly impossible things and things he could have never have done on his own you know so he did what he could and rest he 
gave into the hands of God. And we see that Moses uh, stands out even after centuries and ages. We read about him and uh, we think about him at the same time. When we look at Moses' life, we see that how close his relationship was with God. Uh, in Exodus chapter 33, we, we, see, we read that uh, you know, God talking to Moses face to face and a, as a man speaketh to his friend. That was a very, very strong relationship that Moses had uh, with the Lord. How is our relationship with uh, God? How much time do we spend talking to him is something that we should be looking up. Are we stirred by what is happening around? And is there an intent of doing something is also we should look up, uh, look at. Okay, now we come back to this Psalm, Psalm 90. And, uh, you know, verse 1 and 2 and verses 11 to 17 talks about uh, facts of God. And uh, verse uh, 3 to 10 is about man, you know. Uh, you know, we, we often, uh, uh, you know, groan about uh, the uh, circumstances, the difficulties of life, and uh, we wish they were not part of our life, you know, uh, but, but, but it is part of life and we cannot do away with it. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, the challenges of life uh, make, the li make our life interesting. Ima imagine if uh, life was without uh, difficulties and challenges, how boring and dull that, that would have been. But uh, uh, in, in the midst of these difficulties and circumstances, life can be adventurous. Okay, uh, for some, change is difficult. And in fact, for quite a few, change is uh, difficult. A uh, change of a city, a change of a company, change of environment, you know, and even uh, change in the phases of life, like uh, from adolescence to youth, from youth to middle age, from middle age to, you know, old age, you know, uh, such changes are also very difficult to cope up with. But, you know, uh, our good Lord can help us cope up with these uh, uh, changes and uh, situations, such as circumstances of life. So, in the path of uh, uh, God's grace, uh, time process can be beautiful. And this is what Psalm 90 teaches us about. So we are going to look at first the fact of man and then the uh, fact of God. We read uh, Psalm 90 and verse 3 says, Psalm 90 verse 3 says, Thou turnest man to destruction and sayest, Return, ye children of men. In some translation it says, Thou turnest man to dust. Okay. Man's frailty. Okay, uh, frailty means the condition of uh, being weak, the condition of being delicate. Okay, uh, you know, uh, Bible often tells us about, uh, you know, man being dust. Even when God formed Adam, he, he told Adam that dust you are and to dust will you return. Even in Psalm 103, Psalm 103, we read uh, verse 14, it says, for he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust, okay? Uh, he knows who we are and uh, he remembers when he's dealing with us, he remembers that we are dust. You know, uh, unlike the past, this age, when we look at uh, the achievements of men, okay? Achievements of people around, achievements of people, uh, you know, such which could not be possible few years ago uh, have happened. And because of that, you know, uh, that uh, tendency of uh, men thinking very, very high about themselves is, uh, uh, you know, uh, relatively to the previous age is very, very high in this age. Uh, just look at people around, just look at uh, uh, leaders around, you know, just because uh, they can do what they want. And uh, to an extent, they have been also successful. They believe that they are something and they even challenge uh, many uh, God-ordained uh, rules and uh, boundaries all right but uh, it is only when man becomes sick or who or he or she who are singing very about high about himself uh, you know or when we think high about ourselves and uh, when we fall sick we understand who we are you know it's uh, it's uh, that weak it's that delicate you know sickness uh, reminds us who uh, we are so man is uh, frail however big he may become whatever be his achievements, man is frail. You know, we should not be uh, 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 astonished by the achievements of men uh, because when God made Adam and Eve and when he was blessing them, he said that subdue the earth. Okay. Okay. He, he gave many blessings. So one of the blessings was subdue the earth. So uh, 
this earth is yours take over okay conquer there are many things to be found out you you dig down you research about it you and you uh, subdue it you conquer over it is what god had told and that's what man is doing man man does not know anything and man is putting in his uh, might his strength his wisdom and understanding to find out which he does not know and we we know that uh, many many things uh, which man has uh, uh done in this modern age uh, was wasn't known to people uh for centuries you know uh, when we look at our our age and uh, remember the childhood if i have to think about my childhood you know we lived in a age where you know uh, applying for a landline would uh, you know a, a, a big process and then getting a landline connection would take years okay uh, similarly for a gas connection you apply today you get it after 2 3 years all right but what age we have come in you know you uh, you know the other day i applied for a sim card and uh, you know in the morning i applied online a uh, right sitting in my home and there was a person on my door who was ready to give me the sim all right so you know it was that fast uh, you know it's that that uh, that changes have happened you know from a landline call to a handheld phone to uh, latest mobiles we have traveled and such many many changes in the phase of life we have seen and all those are accomplishments of man okay the wisdom of man and uh, through the brilliance of uh, god given you know ability man has achieved uh, quite much but at the end whatever man has achieved uh, you know we must remember that we are dust and we will return to dust we are frail and uh, that understanding comes when we fall sick so the frailty of man second is uh, uh, verse uh, ch- chap- the same chapter verse 7 uh, 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 and 8 okay uh, verse 7 and 8 says for we are consumed by thine anger and by thy wrath are we troubled thou hast set our iniquities before thee our secret sins in the light of thy countenance all right uh, first was man's uh, frailty second is uh, man's uh, failure okay uh, it's not just about the smallness of man but it's about the sinfulness of man however good we try okay you know uh, this body is sinful okay we know our struggle of uh, overcoming sin we who are believers okay uh, how much we struggle to uh, overcome the attractions of this world so imagine who are not believers what would be their uh, life you know so uh, the 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 uh, uh, you know uh, in the purpose for which uh, god had created man that itself uh, was defeated when the first man uh, sinned and uh, sin entered into this world and everyone who is born out of man or adam came out to be Uh, a sinner and because uh, of that rebellion at the garden of eden uh, it uh, brought the curse of death it brought the curse of pain suffering and all the challenges associated with it so uh, the rebellion of man and god's wrath uh, brought in three things one is uh, uh, transi- transience second is trouble and the third is toil okay transience means uh, a uh, state or fact of lasting for a very short period of time okay verse 5 okay sam 90 so uh, verse 5 says thou carries them away as with a flood they are as a sleep in the morning they are like grass which goeth up okay we see three things here the transient nature of man okay first it says it's like a flood you know we have seen uh, videos of uh, uh, you know flood and even uh, you know recent uh, kerala flood wherein we saw buildings to buildings uh, you know i mean uh, houses to houses being uh, taken away in that flood it was just in a fraction of a second or few seconds and the entire house was taken away that's that is how life has been con- uh, you know compared for some it's for a very very short period of time for some it's like a sleep or in some translation it says it's like dream okay however adventurous the life may be however beautiful and glamorous that life may be uh, it's like that dream which lasts for few hours and once you are awake it's gone so the uh, the life is compared to that short span okay it's like that flash of flood or it's like that uh, couple of hours of uh, uh, dreams 
but it will be gone. And then you know, for some, it's like the grass, you know, grass is there in the morning, all glamorous, and then withers away in the evening. So uh, life is that short. Okay, now the brevity of life is a fact of uh, human existence. And uh, uh, mankind, through its ingenious efforts, has uh, tried to overcome this. But, uh, and many uh, scientists, many uh, people, many a uh, uh, group of people have supported such causes, but we know that in every effort of such kind, man has failed. And uh, this is a reality of life that, uh, you know, uh, in the same uh, chapter we read up in verse 10 that, uh, you know, uh, maybe a 70 year or maximum by 80 years. And even if it's 80, it's about uh, full of trouble. So that's what is life all about. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, that now in the modern age with the kind of lifestyle that we have and the kind of stress that we take, uh, you know, uh, will we even, even uh, go to that 70s and 80s? You know, it is further shortening is what I understand, you know, at at very, very small ages, people have ailments which used to happen uh, in our, uh, you know, uh, say two, two generations ago, which used to happen in a 70, 80 year old people, uh, you know, man or woman is happening now in 30, 40 years of age. So uh, this is what is life, you know, a very, very short span of time is uh, uh, for man. Second is uh, trouble, okay. Verse 10 says, uh, Psalm 90 verse 10 says, the days of our years are three score years and 10. And if by reason of strength, they be four score years, yet is the strength, labor and sorrow. Okay. Trouble is for everyone. Okay. No one is free of trouble. Suffering, pain and sorrow are part of the common lot. Okay. Whether it is the uh, richest, or whether it is the poorest, trouble is part of life. You know, one of my uh, childhood friend, okay, uh, we've studied together since uh, seventh or eighth, most probably eight. I'm not very sure about it, but uh, since then we have been very, very close. And even today we uh, continue to be good friends. So uh, he's a doctor, MD doctor. And, uh, you know, a few months ago, maybe five, six months ago, when we were talking, you know about life and he's of my age and then he was he 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 said this statement you know uh subco and you know remember that this guy was born with a golden spoon you know we say that uh, you know proverb you know born with golden spoon which means that from his childhood he was born with uh, everything in plenty in fact lavish okay that was his life when he was born because his father himself was a doctor so they had everything at their disposal as and when they wanted and then here was this boy talking to me a few months ago and he said ki bhagwan sab ko sab kuch nahi deta hai kuch to chhodta hai varna uski zarurat kya hoti okay he is of my age and he, he does not have a child and that was his his trouble is of that kind you know he has everything at his disposal but he does not have a child Okay, true for everyone. Trouble is part of life and that came in because of sin and uh, God's judgment. The third is uh, toil. Okay, uh, you know, uh, when we look at work, uh, you know, work is a gift of God. Many a times we mistakenly understand that uh, it is an outcome of curse. Okay, curse of sin. Okay, but uh, remember that it is not an outcome of curse. But it was God, God ordained when he placed um, the first man in the Garden of Eden. You know, we'll read that, you know, when he placed this man in Garden of Eden, he told him, you know, he gave him that responsibility to work. You know, chapter 2, verse 15. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Okay. So working was something which was ordained by God. It was not an outcome of curse. Okay. But when man rebelled and sinned, you know, this, uh, this uh, work became sorrowful. Okay. You know, work became toil. Okay. How did it become? That's a curse we read in Genesis chapter 3, verse 17 to 19. We read this way. And, and, and unto Adam, he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. 
in sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life okay in sorrow shall thou eat of it all the days of thy life thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee and thou shall eat the herb of the field in the sweat of thy face shall thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground for out of it wast thou taken for dust thou art and unto dust shall thou return okay so you know when work becomes toil it brings in that frustration and exhaustion uh, instead of a joy and fulfillment okay and because uh, of uh, man sin and god's wrath you know man cannot lift him out of uh, uh, lift himself out of all of this okay the transient nature of life the trouble of life and toil of uh, life or the toil of work you know will be with man because uh, man sinned and uh, invited the judgment of god now we come to the facts of god okay verse 7 uh, uh, onwards uh, sorry verse 11 onwards we read about verse 1 and 2 and then 11 onwards we read about the facts of god all right and uh, before we get into the facts of god we will look at some of the contrasts that we see in this uh, chapter some contrasts okay the contrast is uh, divine sovereignty with human frailty okay we read about uh, divine timelessness or eternity and uh, human transience okay then we read about divine grace and human sin we read about uh, divine security and uh, human insecurity these are some contrast uh, that we see now coming to the facts of god that, that chapter was one says lord thou has been our dwelling place in all generations okay a god of history okay throughout generations okay throughout generations people of god have found refuge and strength in god okay he is not a god of today or tomorrow he is a god of history his people have always found shelter in him his people have always found refuge in him look at our parents look at our grandparents who trusted god how they went back to god for anything and everything okay he is a god of history then in verse 2 we read before the mountains were brought forth or ever thou hadst formed the earth and the world okay a god of creation he formed the earth and the world a god of creation and because he, he is a god of creation he has a sovereign authority okay genesis chapter 1 tells us about how god created the earth okay out of the power of his word he created everything that we see this uh, vast universe was created because god said let it be there okay the sun which has been shining bright for centuries and ages you know it came out because god said it has to be there so uh, god is a god of creation okay he created everything that we see in and around and then in the same words we say see verse 2 uh, the second part from everlasting to everlasting thou art god a god of eternity okay in the beginning god created the heaven and the earth okay so in the beginning means you know that is where everything started before that there is no beginning okay uh, you know so something difficult to understand but by bible repeatedly tells us that he is a god of eternity from everlasting to everlasting uh, thou art god you know he has no beginning he has no end and that's what we read when we come to the whether we come to the first book or when we come to the last book he is a god who has no beginning nor end he is a god of eternity and then in uh, uh, verse uh, you know verse uh, uh, verse 8 we see you know a uh, uh, god who is omniscient okay verse 8 thou hast set our iniquities before thee our secret sins in the light of thy countenance he knows everything you know there's nothing hid from him okay sin done done in secret also is in front of him it's open in him so a god who knows everything there cannot be anything which can be hidden from him and then in verse 14 we read o oh, satisfy us early with thy mercy a god of mercy okay if it was not god's mercy none of us would have been here okay god is so merciful god is so kind god is so gracious and that is the reason why we are not consumed but we are alive 
uh, in some translation it says god of love of course he is a uh, god of love because he revealed his love towards us by sending his son the lord jesus christ all right so uh, what a wonderful god we have a god of history a god of creation a god of eternity a god who knoweth everything and a god of uh, mercy or a god of love okay so uh, with the psalmist uh, when the psalmist understood you know that uh, uh, the, the these facts about god and uh, the facts about man you know what is his prayer uh, moses what what does he ask he asked god in verse 12 uh, give me a heart of wisdom okay verse 12 he says that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom he's asking god for a heart of wisdom because he understood that in in uh, in front of this great and mighty god who is the creator who is a god of eternity who is god of my forefathers and who knows everything and uh, you know he is all merciful Uh, you know i am nothing you know uh, i am i am like the grass of the field which is there in the morning and with us away in the evening so he asked god for, to give him a heart of wisdom okay and what does he ask uh, verse 12 so teach us to number our days okay so teach us to number our days now the word number is not about uh, uh, years okay it's not about years but it it's about uh, a uh, way or measure so teach me to measure my days teach me to weigh my days so uh, it's it's like uh, you know take care of the days and uh, these days will take care of the years okay so that's why he was asking god uh, make my days uh, such that it is useful for thee and for thy glory so what uh, the the meaning was it's not about uh, you know the quantity it was about quality okay it was not about how many years that uh, one lives it's not about how many years one is uh, on this earth but it's about what he or she has accomplished for the lord in the time that he has uh, or she has uh, spent on this earth okay the purpose should be god's gl- glory and blessing to others nothing else uh, should be if that is the purpose that is the calling uh, should that is how the calling uh, the purpose should be that it should bring glory to god's name and blessing to uh, others it may be a short life but it will it can be a full life okay uh, you know we all have read about jim elliot okay uh, we even enacted that in uh, in our sunday school all right so uh, even he went uh, to the aukas okay Uh, he writes like this a short life in the saddle lord not a long life by fire okay he asked god for a short life okay but in a short span of time how what did he accomplish okay an unreachable group of people were actually reached and uh, brought unto the lord that's what a very short a short life did someone else writes this way it is far better to burn out for god than to rust out okay it is far better to burn out for god than to rust out when we look at our country okay uh, look at uh, people like sadhu sundar singh okay around the age of 40 he was not seen and uh, how did it end where did he go no one knows but in that very short span of time what did he accomplish okay he traveled all the way in our country even our uh, neighboring countries he traveled across he went to america he went to europe taking the word of god to uk you know he he was uh, he was extensively used for the lord he attracted many a people unto the lord and uh, in, in a very very short span of time he could accomplish much a short life but a full life okay then uh, you know the psalmist asks god oh satisfy us early with thy mercy was 14 oh satisfy us early with thy mercy that we may rejoice and be glad all our days okay satisfaction will result in joy okay uh, it is only when we are not satisfied what with what we do not satisfied with what we have is only when we are not happy okay uh, you know uh, in new testament we read that godliness with contentment is great king okay uh, satisfaction uh, is a difficult thing uh you know uh, when i look at myself you know uh, when when i started uh, in my early days as i was growing up uh, a cycle was a fascination okay uh, then when i started working uh, 
uh, you know, I thought of getting a bike. And then as the earning increased, I thought of getting a car. And then from a, a small car, now a big car, you know, uh, this continues. This is how, uh, you know, uh, people are and I, I, I am. But then uh, somewhere at some point of time, you know, that has to come to an end where we are saying enough. We are satisfied with what God has given. And, and if God has any plans of uh, giving a uh, better of what we have, it, it's always a welcome. But uh, uh, how about uh, uh, satisfaction? Satisfaction come, can come only because of God's grace. Okay, it cannot be because of circumstances. Circumstances can never uh, make us uh, satisfied, but uh, by God's uh, steadfast love, which is unmerited. And Psalmist is asking God, for that uh, satisfaction through his mercy. Then, then in verse uh, uh, 16, the psalmist says, let thy work appear unto thy servants and thy glory unto their children. Yes, the work of the Lord, when we see New Testament, we see that uh, the work of our Lord is the work on the cross of Calvary. And uh, the glory of the Lord was revealed in the form of Jesus Christ. And we, saw, we know that through him, eternal life has been provided to mankind and we are recipients of that eternal life. So the, the work of the Lord and the glory of the Lord has already been given to us in the form of Jesus Christ and we have received eternity through him. And then finally, he asks for fulfillment, okay, verse 17. And let the beauty of the Lord our God be upon us and establish thou the work of our hands upon us a, the work of our hands established the it. Only in Christ we can find, find fulfillment in the work of our hands. Okay. Uh, you know, satisfaction, as I said, it's a very difficult thing. Similarly, fulfillment of what is in our hand and, and you know, uh, completing it uh, appropriately is uh, can be done only when we have Christ in the center, you know, uh, in New Testament, we are reminded of the fact that do not work for human masters, okay, uh, work for God. And, and that is when we work for God, we can have that actual fulfillment. So a few years ago on 31st December, uncle read this portion from verse 12 to 17. It's a wonderful prayer to buy heart and uh, to recite and to pray as we sit in front of God, verse 12 to 17. I have by hearted that. I would encourage all of you to by heart that and, and pray and ask God for his uh, mercy upon us at the same time to establish uh, our work. And, uh, you know, uh, we may continue to live a life which is pleasing unto him. So uh, throughout the ages, men and women have accomplished greater things for the Lord through the uh, grace that God has provided and the through, through uh, the mercy that God gives. And if it was not of, because of God's grace or if it was not because of his mercy, uh, we would not have been al alive. So as we remembered, you know, the frailty of man, okay, uh, the failure of man, it's all about sin and sin and sin. The body runs after sin, okay. Then we looked at the, you know, transient nature of life, the, the trouble of life, the toil of life, you know, these are part of life and it's inevitable because of the sin of man and the judgment of God. But at the same time, we looked at the facts of God, okay, a God of creation, okay, a God of eternity, a God who knows everything, a God of mercy. And then we looked at the purpose. The, the purpose should be uh, God's glory and uh, blessing to others. Then we looked at satisfaction. Then we looked at eternal life. And uh, then we saw the fulfillment if Christ is in the center of our work. So may God help us to meditate upon this uh, Sam uh, more and understand more about it. And we may uh, apply this in our life that... Uh, uh, you know, it's not just about an understanding of ourselves, but an understanding of who God is. And ultimately, with that understanding, both the understanding, we may have a purposeful living. May God help us in doing the same. May his name alone be glorified.